Hello dear friends and welcome. If you live through the 80s, it's highly likely you've danced and sung their songs until exhaustion. Success came almost immediately, but it came with misunderstandings, discussions, lawsuits, and even a fraud case that many compare to Milli Vanilli's. Despite it all, we still have their great songs that we can still enjoy. Dieter Winterball, born in Nacion Vermi Baja, Saxony, Germany, on February 7, 1954, is the eldest son of entrepreneurs Hans and Edith Bowling. His father was a hydraulic engineer and wanted his son to inherit his company, but Dieter had no interest in it. When he was only nine years old, he discovered the Beatles, and his passion for music ignited. Since he didn't have enough money for a guitar, and his father didn't support him, he got a job with a neighboring farmer, harvesting potatoes, and managed to save enough money to buy his first guitar. He dedicated many hours to practice and soon mastered the instrument self-taught. He began performing at school events, where he played Beatles songs in his own original compositions. At the age of 15, he already had his own band called My Fire and also joined other local groups like Aorta and Capo. He wrote songs incessantly, and his compositions numbered in the hundreds, demonstrating great songwriting skills. You're my heart, you're my soul In 1973, at the age of 19, he met Erika Sauerland in a discotheque in Hamburg, who would become his wife and with whom he would have three children. They dated for ten years and got married in 1983. Peter enrolled in university to study economics, and although he completed the degree, his true passion was music. He started performing in nightclubs, where he earned a decent income. But Peter wanted to be a big star, so he constantly sent his songs to record labels, hoping for an opportunity. In 1977, together with a friend named Holder, he formed the duo Monza and recorded two songs that had no success, so he soon abandoned the project. In 1979, after many rejections, he finally got a job at a record company called Intersong, a subsidiary of BMG, where he wrote songs for others using various pseudonyms like Stevenson or Drive Simmons. In 1980, he recorded his first solo song called Don't Love My Love Away, but not under his real name, but under the pseudonym Stevenson. The song also didn't achieve significant success. In late 1981, Peter joined the band Sunday, with which he recorded his first major hit titled Ollie and Lewis, which was quite successful. In early 1982, Peter gained a lot of fame in the German music industry as a producer for other artists and a successful songwriter. However, despite the enormous recognition, Peter was determined to succeed as a singer as well. From 1983 onwards, he released several moderately successful songs under the pseudonym Gene Simmons. But the reality was that he didn't have exceptional vocal quality and excelled more in composition and production. In 1984, after trying many different approaches, Dieter Bolin's most successful project and the one that would bring him long-awaited worldwide recognition started. It was the creation of a new band called Modern Talking. For this project, Dieter interviewed many singers and backing vocalists and ultimately chose a young singer he had recently produced named Thomas Sanders to be the backbone of the group. They were supported by various backing vocalists like Ralph Kohler, Detlef Wittig, and Michael Scott Rank Hollers, who would become the creator of the falsetto technique. The characteristic that would bring fame to modern talking, and would even become their trademark, was the use of Dieter Bolin's and the other backing vocalists' voices in the recordings. This would later lead to controversy, disputes, and lawsuits. But we'll talk about this interesting fact in a moment. The two main figures of the band, the faces on the album covers and in the music videos, were Dieter Bolin and Thomas Anders. But who was Thomas Anders? His real name is Vern Window, and he was born on March 1, 1963. 
His father worked in the Ministry of Asia Taxes, and his mother managed a small grocery store. From a young age, Thomas showed talent for acting, music, and singing. At the age of six, he participated in his first theatrical play, and at ten, he won a student singing contest, competing against 100 other children. During his teenage years, he received music lessons and started singing in restaurants and clubs. After participating in a contest organized by Radio Luxembourg, he was offered his first contract with the record label CBS. He chose the stage name Tomas Anders and recorded his first solo song in 1980 at the age of 17. He recorded three or four songs for CBS, but they didn't achieve high chart positions, so the record label terminated his contract, leaving him free. He then signed with another small label, and in 1982, he tried his luck with a couple of new songs, but they also didn't succeed. In 1983, at the age of 20, he was signed by the label Intersong to perform several covers of English songs in the German language. It was there that he met producer Dieter Bolin, who produced several tracks for him. A few months later, in early 1984, he was selected to be part of a new musical project called Modern Talking. On November 12, 1984, Thomas Sanders and his then-girlfriend, German model Nora Beiling, were involved in a serious car accident. Miraculously, they both survived, and 45 days later, the couple got married. The record label BMG accepted the project of a Euro disco band proposed by Dieter. However, since they were uncertain about the group's success, they didn't allocate much budget, resulting in the early music videos having a simple production. The name of the group came to them while they were looking at a large poster hanging on the studio wall, which displayed the names of several bands. Among them was a group called Talk Talk and another called Modern Romans. Peter started playing with these words, combining them in various ways, and that's how the name Modern Talking emerged. In October 1984, they released their first single titled You're My Heart, You're My Soul. You're my heart, you're my soul. Initially, it didn't make much impact, but three months later, the music video for the song was broadcasted on a popular German television program, and sales began to skyrocket. The success of the song went global, staying in the German top 10 for six consecutive weeks and remaining in the top 10 of 35 countries' charts, including Austria, Belgium, Switzerland, France, Sweden, and Spain. On March 13, 1985, their second song titled, You Can't Win If You Want, was released, which also achieved excellent sales results and reached the top positions in charts of countries like Germany, France, Belgium, and Spain. These first two successes were included in their debut album, the first album, which was released in mid-1985. Initially, the couple got along well and were the perfect complement to each other. Thomas had an exceptional voice, and although Dieter wasn't as talented, Thomas was the one who wrote the songs and produced the music. Despite their tremendous success, Thomas Sanders and Dieter Bolin started clashing and having personal problems and disagreements. The main cause of their conflicts was Thomas's wife, Nora Bay Ling, who interfered too much in modern talking's affairs and wanted to make creative decisions that weren't her place. She wanted to be the one approving the band's lyrics and making all the decisions for her husband who barely uttered a word. Thomas was deeply in love, and she manipulated him in every possible way. In fact, she forced her husband to wear a necklace with her name at all times. In addition to this, the personalities of both singers were opposite. Anders was a reserved and calm type, while Bolin was very extroverted, a party-goer, and a lover of clubs. There was a ten-year age difference between them. Despite the problems arising from their immense success and being bound by a signed contract, Modern Talking continued working. Before the year ended, on September 2, 1985, they released the first single from their second album titled Cherry Cherry Lady, 
which sold over 250,000 copies in Germany alone and achieved similar success to their previous tracks across Europe. Love is where you find it, listen to your heart In this way, their second album titled, Let's Talk About Love, hit the market on October 14, 1985. The big hits kept coming one after another with overwhelming and surprising success. On January 27, 1986, the song, Brother Louis, was released, which had incredible sales in Germany and internationally, even selling 250,000 copies in France and reaching number 4 on the UK singles chart something none of their previous songs had achieved. As a curiosity, this catchy song was written by Dieter Bolin and inspired by his friend and Modern Talkings producer, Luis Rodriguez. Both friends had a crush on the same girl, but she ultimately chose Luis over Dieter. Brother Louis was included on their third album titled, Ready for Romance, released on May 26, 1986. Another successful song from this album was, Atlantis is Calling. Interestingly, the fame of the band spread worldwide except in the United States, where they never released an album and didn't even make it to the Billboard charts. Another interesting detail is that strong rumors about Thomas and Dieter being a couple circulated from the beginning. These rumors intensified after they performed at a gay club in London. However, they later claimed that they didn't know the place was exclusive to gay people. The reality is that both band members were known to have many girlfriends and had several children, so their homosexuality was nothing more than a rumor. The duo also reached the top with their sixth single, Geronimo's Cadillac, from the fourth album, In the Middle of Nowhere, and with the song, Jet Airliner, from their fifth album, Romantic Warriors. Both singles reached the German top ten, sold well in Europe, and even reached positions 1 and 3 in Spain. However, the total sales of the fifth album were not very good and fell far short of the success of their previous works. In November 1987, their sixth album titled, See You in Pegarme, was released, but it didn't perform well in terms of sales either. Towards the end of 1987, during an interview and in a surprising manner, Dieter Bolin abruptly cancelled the project, The Mother Packing, while his partner Thomas Anders was in the US. The main reason given by Dieter was that it had become impossible to work with Thomas. Not only was Thomas's wife excessively jealous and dominant, but she also forced him not to give interviews and demanded major changes in recordings, stages, and logistics of the group. Nora's interference was so intense that she even wanted Peter to make her the third main member of the group, allowing her to sing. Another thing Nora did was force Thomas to stand Dieter up at some concerts to make him realize that without Thomas, the band was nothing. Thomas accused Dieter of being extremely greedy and not caring about running over any friend or collaborator to make more money. Dieter, on the other hand, claimed that Thomas earned too much money and contributed very little time to the band. In short, things were not going well between them. The accusations against Nora were initially denied by Thomas, but years later, when he published his biography, he admitted that they were true. The separation of the group was also influenced by public exhaustion and the band's own stagnation creatively. In just three years, the group had released six albums, following a fixed formula without giving themselves time to evolve or improve their sound. Obviously, Thomas Sanders did not like at all that his partner dissolved the group while he was absent, and they had a very heated argument. After this, they spent ten years without speaking to each other. After the breakup, both of them focused on personal projects. Thomas Sanders continued his career as a solo artist and performed at the Vina del Mar Festival in 1988, singing modern talking songs. In 1989, his first solo album titled, Different, was released, and its single, Love on My Own, achieved significant success in Europe. After that, he released five more albums, Whispers, in 1991, where he collaborated with Progesil from Roxette, Down and Sons and, in 1992, 
which included a successful duet with Glenn Medeiros titled, When Will I See You Again, and Vision De, in 1993 and 1994, where he surprised with a completely Spanish-language album titled, Barcos de Cristal, which included a total of 10 songs, one of them titled, Tu Chica y Es Mi Chica, featuring Glenn Medeiros. She's gone. Thomas released one more album in 1995 called Soul. Despite his great work, Thomas' solo success was rather limited, and after a costly divorce from his wife Nora in 1999, his financial situation was greatly affected. He even had to take a job hosting a two-hour radio program. On the other hand, Dieter Bolin founded a new band called Blue System, for which he included the backup singers of Modern Talking. Ralph Kohler, Detlef Wittig, and May, who were the true voices behind the modern talking songs, alongside Thomas Sanders. However, they remained in the background while Dieter and other attractive members were the ones seen in videos and performances. Between 1987 and 1997, Blue System released a total of 12 albums, achieving significant success, albeit mainly focused in Germany and Austria. In 1997, after a decade of not speaking to each other, Peter decided that it was a favorable moment to revive modern talking. He contacted Anders, and as time heals all wounds, both partners reconcile and start working on a new album. In March 1998, Back for Good was released, which marked Modern Talking's seventh album. It consisted of four completely new songs and a selection of their greatest hits, remixed with more modern beats. The work was a resounding success, and amazingly, it would become their most successful album, selling over 10 million copies and achieving gold record status in countries such as Germany, Switzerland, France, Austria, Spain, Argentina, and Chile. The eighth album was titled, Along, and was released in 1998 with favorable results. The two standout songs from this work were, You Are Not Alone, and, Sexy Sexy Lover. In 2000, the Year of the Dragon in the Chinese calendar, the ninth album, Gear of Tatragon, was released. In 2001, they released, America, the tenth album of Modern Talking, with its first single, Win the Race, being used successfully as background music for Formula One races. In 2002, Victor, was released as their eleventh work, followed by, Universe, in 2003, their twelfth production. In 2002, Dieter began serving as a judge on the German version of American Idol, where he gained a fame similar to Simon Cowell for his tough and often hurtful comments. On June 7, 2003, during a concert, Dieter Bolin announced that modern talking was coming to an end. Tomas and I reflected and decided to go our separate ways. However, Tomas stood on stage, speechless, not knowing what to say, as he did not expect this. After uttering an insult against Dieter, he angrily stormed off the stage. The history repeated itself as a decade ago, Beatle ended the group without considering Tomas' opinion. The truth was that they had not been able to get along. Dieter accused Tomas of not taking the group seriously and being more concerned about taking vacations to exotic places and wearing high-quality clothing than the details of the recordings. Dieter accused Tomas of performing in the U.S. and informing the producers that he was sick, without notifying him. Tomas, on the other hand, considered Dieter an egomaniac who always wanted to be in the spotlight and take all the credit. He accused him of treating all his collaborators and musicians like a dictator. Dieter even accused Tomas of fraud, claiming that he submitted fictitious invoices to claim the group's money. In response to these accusations, Tomas sued him for defamation and won the case in 2006, as there was no evidence of any of those claims. 
Adding to this controversy, a lawsuit was filed by Modern Talking's backing vocalists, Blackler, Michael Scholes, and Detlef Wittig, demanding compensation because they were the original voices behind the falsetto parts. Dieter had always kept them in the shadows to make the audience believe that he was the one singing those parts. Brands Kohler even stated that not a single word of the songs they recorded came out of Dieter's mouth. These accusations were confirmed when the original demos that Dieter prepared, where he sang to let Tomas and the backing vocalists know his ideas for the songs, appeared in the media. These tapes were stolen from Dieter's house and demonstrated that Dieter's voice was of very poor quality and was not used in the demo recordings of Modern Talking. Many considered Dieter a fraudster and compared the case to the infamous Milli Vanilli scandal, where two attractive singers lip-synced while the actual voices belonged to other people. The lawsuit went to court, but the record label BMG and Dieter Bolin reached an agreement with the backing vocalists, paying them a large sum of money to dismiss the lawsuit. The agreement included a prohibition from discussing the matter with the press, so the details never became known. Despite all the controversies, Modern Talking's music has stood the test of time, and their songs are now considered classics. The band sold over 120 million records, making them the most successful musical group in the history of Germany. Currently, Dieter continues to make appearances on television and works as a producer for new talents, while Thomas Sanders remains active as a solo artist, releasing albums in both English and German. Please, share your comments and subscribe to our channel. See you in another video. You're my heart, you're my soul.